Ever since I was a young boy, I always had a devotion to Our Lady, and I think I was always drawn to her because she's this motherly figure. Um, like in today's Gospel reading, you see that tenderness that she has as that mother and how she's caring for Jesus and holding her in, in her arms. But Mary being the mother of God isn't just, you know, those you know, pictures of the nativity that we think of at, during this Christmas season, but it, there's actually a lot more depth to that. So we first hear about Mary being called the mother of God actually in the Gospel of Luke. Because when Elizabeth greets Mary, she says, how is it that the mother of my Lord should come to me? So it's actually biblical that we call Mary the mother of God. And in the third century, they started calling Mary the Theotokos, or the God-bearer, meaning the mother of God. And this uh, idea of the mother of God was um, became dogma at the Council of Ephesus in four, the year 431. And this understanding of that Mary is the mother of God, both of her of Jesus and his humanity and his divinity, is very important for understanding today's second reading. Because what we see here is that Mary is being the mother of God, is actually the mother of all of us. So it's through this adoption, through God taking on human flesh, that we get to become brothers and sisters of Christ, which means that we have that relation to God the Father. So we're no longer slaves subordinate to the law, but through Mary's yes, through Mary taking on the Savior, through Christ becoming born of the Virgin Mary, we get to be called God Father. We get to be called adopted sons of God, and we get to have that intimate relationship with God. And this is also repeated, I think, in a beautiful way in the John's Gospel. We see at the end um, at the, of the Passion narrative where Jesus is dying on the cross, and what does Jesus say? But So there's Our Lady and John at the foot of the cross. And Jesus says, Woman, behold your son, and son, behold your mother. And at this moment, John is emblematic of the entire church. So what Jesus does is he gives everyone his mother as, our mo as their mother. So he gives the church to be the mother. In this way, we all have that, Our Lady for that intercession, we all have that devotion to her, we all have her on our side to lead us closer to Christ. Because also, as Louis de Mumford reminds us, everything about Mary points to Jesus. His line is, to Jesus through Mary. So anything we learn about Mary, we actually learn about Christ. And one, one last thing I'd like to point out about Our Lady is, I've always been struck by this line, and Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. We can see as a mother who is um, seeing her child go through things, and she always holds them, she always thinks about them, she always prays for her child. But in a special way, Mary is holding these things in her heart, but what she really is doing is she is praying for Jesus. She is reflecting on Jesus. She is understanding his, the mystery of him in her life. So today, as we're inspired by the Blessed Virgin Mary on her feast day, let us not be afraid to run to her as our mother so we can have that intimate relationship with her. And may she lead us closer to Christ so that we can reflect on these things in our hearts and become closer to Christ each and every day.